Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Continuing on the flat abdominal mall musculature, let's first look at very briefly the external abdominal oblique, which we have already studied in detail, reflecting it medial word, and we can then see the upward coursing internal abdominal oblique muscles coming off of the inguinal ligament and the anterior superior spine of the ilium. When that muscle is reflected, we then can see the third flat abdominal wall muscle, the transversus abdominis. Its name arises from the fiber direction. And in the inguinal area, the transversus abdominis muscle, as we can see in overview, appears just like that of the internal abdominal oblique. Putting internal abdominal oblique back, we see arching fibers called the falx inguinalis. And we have the very same thing here on the transversus abdominis muscle. Falx inguinalis fibers that are joined together with those of the internal abdominal oblique, and I have separated them here for clarity. Between the pubic tubercle medially and the anterior superior spine above, we have the deep inguinal ring one half of the distance between the two. So the in deep inguinal ring lies just above the inguinal ligament and halfway between the pubic tubercle and the lateral anterior superior iliac spine. When we look at this again from above, we can see the spermatic cord as it is coming out from just beneath the fibers of origin of the transversus abdominis muscle. This is the deep inguinal ring. And the deep inguinal ring has here a contribution from the underside of the transversus abdominis wall, and it is the transversalis fascia with some fatta in it that then will be the innermost wrapping around the spermatic cord. Now this transversalis fascia is not specific to the transversus abdominis muscle, but rather it is a fascia that lines the entire inner aspect of the abdominal cavity. And here again, the arching fibers of the Fox portion of transversus abdominis. Now when we look at the spermatic cord, we should see, first of all, that by dissecting completely the structures and freeing them up and individualizing each one of them, we can identify the four structures of the spermatic cord. The first is a vas deferens, or ductus deferens, that passes from the testicle into the uh, prostatic urethral area. This carries the spermatic spermatic fluids, and you can tell, now all of these structures are artery, vein, or ductus deferens. And the way you can determine which is ductus deferens is first of all, it is a very thick, heavy walled structure with a very small lumen, and it is very, very dense. So when you roll these three structures that are easily seen here in your fingers, there's one that is relatively rigid and thick. That is ductus deferens. In addition to that, there will be an artery and vein crossing along in the spermatic cord. It is the deferential artery and vein. And along with that, there is a testicular artery and vein. And the venous portion of this testicular system tends to be multiple, tends to be hairnet-like, running all the way around and through uh, the spermatic cord, and it is also referred to as 
the pampiniform plexus. Once more in the inguinal area, we have the deep inguinal ring halfway down between its attachment points and the superficial ring which was found just above and lateral to the pubic tubercle. It, it lies on the inguinal ligament. This then is the floor of the inguinal canal. The canal extends again from superficial to deep ring. It is covered over by the fibers of the external abdominal oblique. Medially, of course, is its superficial ring. The superior wall, if you will, are the arching fibers of the Faux inguinalis portion of the transversus abdominis and the internal abdominal oblique. And also the dorsal back body wall will form that area as well. Interfoveolar ligament is sometimes a very thick band of transversalis fascia that as soon as this these muscle fibers arise, it dips directly down behind the uh, spermatic cord. It is very thin in this specimen, almost to the point of being mesh-like, and I have already cut through it by gently probing, and we find here a very important artery adjacent to a yet-to-be-dissected vein, the inferior epigastric artery and vein. Turning our attention now to the one long abdominal wall muscle, and that is rectus abdominis. And the rectus abdominis muscle arises from the pubic crest and tubercles off of the midline and passes upward to the lower ribs uh, anteriorly. The origin is lower down than its insertion, so this muscle will tend to pull forward and downward, in other words, bending of the torso in a forward direction. External abdominal oblique now forms the front cover of this rectus sheath that covers rectus abdominis. Along with it, too, is the internal abdominal oblique aponeurosis. And together, they form this relatively thick, heavy rectus sheath. Here now we can see the rectus abdominis muscle on the one side, vertical fibers passing upward from their origin, and supplied by the lower intercostal nerves, as is most of the other abdominal wall musculature. For the intercostal nerves in the lower area, from about 10, 11, and 12, sometimes as high as 8, swing down to supply the upper anterior abdominal wall. The transversus abdominus muscle, on the other hand, will send all of its aponeurotic fibers, which are starting to show right along this line, behind the rectus abdominis and it forms the bulk of the posterior rectus sheath. The internal abdominal oblique muscle, however, also splits, sending some of its aponeurotic fibers to go backwards and underneath along with transversus abdominis. This is true in about the upper two-thirds of this rectus area, and it is in the lower one-third, that it no longer does so, so that all of the fibers of the internal abdominal oblique pass in front of the rectus abdominis muscle. Again, looking at the rectus sheath, you should free up both its medial and its lateral margins, and so that when you look at it in side view, we will be able to see beneath the muscle, and you will be able to note arteries and veins coming in to supply it, and also this, the inferior epigastric blood vessel that we saw 
just medial to the deep inguinal ring, passing upward for the major supply of rectus abdominis muscle. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.